What's up everybody? Welcome to today's sit down episode. I am super excited to be in the presence of true greatness. We have a beauty queen that is unmatched. That a young lady that's going to be on the couch today processing her career and what she's currently busy with and where she's going in her life is an amazing, amazing woman. Her name is Roxy Amos. She's a WBFF competing very talented, very physically fit model, as well as a professional makeup artist. We are here for the ladies today. Hope you guys get the value and I hope you enjoy the show and as much as I did. Thank you very much. Roxy, welcome to the show. I want to start with my first and favorite question and um, you know it's like two three years ago you're 17 years old <laughs> <I'm watching>. <laughs> <laughs> let's process what is important in your life at 17 so I, I presume you're still in high school mm -hmm. um, 17 years old is it you know if if I look at you is it um, grades is it sport is it boys you know what's important at that stage of Roxy's life um, well being from the south coast, there, um, there's not much to do there um, other than go to the beach and the movies or something. So life was very different back then. Um, I was a lifeguard, a trained lifeguard back then. I used to do At the, 17 already? Yeah. Okay, I started wow. off doing the nippers, which is like junior lifeguarding. And then um, I would go compete all over the country and the they'd have like um, essay champs. So you'd have like um, these races and like lifeguard stuff. So I was a lifeguard and I was into cross country and athletics um, and school. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I didn't actually have too many friends in high school. Um, I was hard to believe because <laughs> I, I, I think you were very popular, but not, not, okay. Yeah, I actually didn't have many friends. So, um, yeah, um, went to school in Port Chepstone and then matriculated and moved straight to Durban and haven't left since. Okay, <laughs> enjoying that uh, beautiful yeah. humidity. I wasn't, wasn't into gym back then, but all the other things. So on that point, how does, you know, how does it happen for you? Do you maybe go and work out with a friend and like, I like this. I, I love the intensity. I love the, because gymming is a community, I, I feel, and, and it's an experience and it's, it's an event. How does that for journey me, happen? For me, um, my gym is more like my therapy. So it would be like taking someone with me to therapy. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I go to gym, put my earphones on, and I just like get in the zone. Um, I'm not one to talk at gym. Like if I see someone, I know I'll just greet them and carry on. Um, but when it comes to competing, mm -hmm. though, like it's good to have that community people that you can rely on as your support structure and people that you can chill with backstage and all of that and share common interests. But when it comes to actual gym, it's just me and the training. <laughs> okay, got you. Yeah. I, I want to touch on the competing part. So we we had an off-camera conversation and and um, we've had Yaku De Brainia who's had massive international yeah, success. He's, and he's yeah. very he's very cool and he's a he's a very humble person and and so are you. I must compliment you. Now the vision I had <laughs> of the girl that's gonna walk in our studio versus the I'm girl that's very that actually, different in comparison to my Instagram. Yeah, like. you, you are. You're very friendly and you're very soft and calm. But how, how do you how do you go into a competition? Let's say you know, it's three months or six months before the event. Can we process the uh, the diet? I, I'm mm -hmm. sure, you know, all the women are going to, when they hear diet, they're going to be like, okay, yes, there, there comes the good stuff. So I want to yeah. give them some value yeah. when it comes to the diet in preparation, during and post. And, mm -hmm. you know, how do you maintain, um, you know, afterwards? Because I'm sure the diet is is, is quite strict and it, it's, it's hectic on your body. Well, 
it's just um it's different for everybody um the first thing you need to do is find a good coach that has the right things in mind and has your best interest at heart. It's not someone that's just going to want to win, 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 and no matter how you do it. At any cost, just, which is normally yeah. very high in your sport. Yeah. So um, firstly, you find yourself a good coach. In my case, um, I'm coached by Rian Diena. Um, Shout from, out. <laughs> yes, from Reshape. Um, obviously, I'm not competing now, but my whole um, fitness career, I owe to Rian. Okay. Um, so you haven't shifted. You've been with one I, person. I started before. with um, one coach when I first started for my first year competing, um, which was Cindy. Um, yeah, and my first year. Uh, well, we can touch on that later. Let's just get back to the question. Okay. So, find yourself a good coach, um, and then discuss like what you have in mind in terms of your goals, which shows you think you'd like to enter, and be realistic about it. Like you can't just like get into it and think oh, I'll compete like in a month's time like you have to really like put in everything and it can't just be half-hearted like that's why now even people ask me when am I competing again and I'm like I can't because my career is like what I'm focused on right now so um yeah your coach will assess you based on where you are currently and normally it takes about 18 weeks or so um, to get into condition. but For stage, 18 yeah, for weeks. for stage. Um, okay. But if you're already competing, you should maintain some sort of, of shape or form in your off-season. And it's really important to um, grow in your off-season. That's what a lot of athletes make the mistake with. They try stay this like in a certain. Um, We're talking about weight and size. Yeah. Okay, got um, you. I I believe that it's good to um, add like a healthy growth into your um, development to just. Um, better yourself because you can't like remain the same and then expect to get a different outcome. I, I suppose well, it, it makes sense because if you're in a constant calorie deficit, yeah. you, you can't, you can't so live for there. For instance, um, my last show, my show in Australia, um, Rion had me on 2,400 calories up, That's until, a lot. That's up a lot. until show day without a depletion week and I was overseas. 2,400 calories is a lot. Day. So that's, I could do this because I maintained in my off season. Okay. And not once did he cut my carbs. So, so I, I lost nearly 30 kilograms wow. in, in, in four months. And, and the person that helped me achieve that goal had me on 1,800 uh, calories. You know, and you I see, would, that's not healthy. But, but, but only for, for a very short period of time. And then we increased it. Yeah. But, but I didn't feel, you, you know, processing how I felt. I See, didn't now, feel. If you maintain in your off season, you don't have to do that hectic, restricted diet. You yes. can still eat reasonably well, and you don't have to be depleted, um, which I see in a lot of athletes. Some of their coaches have them on like thousand two hundred calories, oh, and no, then they nothing. just like fade away. Whereas, like the WBFF look, those girls look healthy. Yes. And I don't know. For me, that's that's more attractive and more appealing because it just I don't like that stick figure look. Yeah, and yeah, agree. And and at two thousand four hundred calories, right up to the the yeah, day of the right show, what what sort of you know what what sort of training regimen are you going are you putting yourself through? So, I mean, you have yeah, to burn so those calories. You you weigh very little. Yeah, so, so well, with all those calories, you're able to lift heavier as well. Okay. So, like, you're even training legs. Well, ladies, like, they normally stop training legs, like, the beginning of the week or even the week before um, peak week. So, I was training legs, like, two days before the show. Okay. Um, so, with that amount of calories, you're just able to push harder and... 
obviously everyone's different and there's a way to manipulate things and that's where my coach comes in and yeah my training program was changing like every month so you're not doing the same repetitive things got you so it it keeps it it keeps it not 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 exciting but it keeps it different yeah, and targeting yeah. the different Definitely. areas of of your body from different types of yeah. exercises how do you feel about performance enhancement drugs oh no <laughs> it's like a swear word, swear word in my books because it's very common in your sport i mean it's, it's the easy way out basically uh, and how, how does that work what do you mean by the easy way out well if you don't have the right coach they're just going to oh take this take this Fat whereas, burners yeah and, and whereas if you're just eating correctly and training correctly you don't need even a fat burner um i don't even most of the time take a protein shake nothing not just even a pre-workout just a clean diet oh i can't without pre-workout i'll be like <laughs> half asleep i don't do well with stimulus <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my ears do get red <laughs> sometimes yeah body yeah, temperature goes up you can just see like the athletes that do take it like the ladies like it's just it's it's like havoc on your body and especially ladies that still want to have children like you don't want to do that to your body like also like you blow up afterwards once you stop that's what i wanted that. to ask you next because you 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 naturally compete versus somebody that yeah. that that's getting help from that's from another drugs. thing um if you deplete and restrict yourself so much you're gonna blow up after show. Whereas if you maintain some sort of a shape throughout the whole year, um, and then you go on a reverse diet after your show, you won't be like those athletes that peak once a year. Got and you. The rest of the year, they're like yeah, they bigger. B- b- because I think I suppose the the audience that's gonna watch this interview wants to maintain a healthy mm-hmm. lifestyle. And and you 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 don't live for that one event because yeah, no matter if you win or lose, it is a lifestyle at the yeah. end of the day. And I think um, you need to maintain some sort of healthy lifestyle, not just it's like what are you doing to your body? You depleting so much, and then you pumping yourself full of food. It's like what yeah. do you think is going to happen? Yeah, that food is gonna is gonna yeah. go places. Yeah, yeah. Okay, beautiful. Thank you. I've learned a lot, <laughs> and. Um, like I said, like everyone is different, but the main thing is to get a coach that is aligned with your goals and is not just going to like put you on some drastic thing that's just going to ruin your body. When you when you look at the concept of living a healthy lifestyle mm-hmm. and competing, I, I, I mean, very interested in, in your sport, competing. What is the hardest part for you? Because every time I ask a professional athlete, what is the hardest part? You know, I've, I get a different answer. Mm-hmm. Elite athletes give me a similar answer. I would love to know, yeah. you know, which part do you enjoy the most? Is it the food, uh, preparation? Is it the actual exercise? Is it the day of the show? What mm-hmm. part do you enjoy the most? And what do you dread? The part I enjoy the most is show day because I live for the glitz and the glam and those sparkly bikinis and all of that. <laughs> you just get this, like, Beyonce feel, like, Sasha Fierce. Um, the part that I don't like is the mental strain it puts you in. And I don't think enough people speak on this because, um, striving for that perfection constantly, you're never happy, you're never, never satisfied. Um, I've had times when I'm deep in prep and someone just says the wrong thing and I just take it to my head and it goes in your head. Yes. And I just feel, um, you know, you never perfect. You're always putting yourself down. Um, never happy. (laughs) So it can become very obsessive and selfish sport. Um, and I think if you don't have the right support system, you are just going to go downhill. Uh, and I suppose your coach plays a big part in that because definitely, it's, definitely. If, if you look at any sport, we, we recently had the World Cup, you know, team shows up, even if it's an individual sport, if you score a goal, you win. Mm. But you are being judged on 
yes. somebody else's ideal, mm -hmm. which I think makes it even more technical. Because yeah. if you if you feel like I've got the perfect, I've got the perfect abs, but you know they're not perfect for the person judging you. You know mm -hmm. there, there's a yeah, and there's a lot of comparison. Obviously, you're always comparing yourself to the next person. Like oh, but he looks better or she looks better. Um, I wish I was like this or. Yeah. So, um, so what? How, how do you counter that? What 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 measure do you use to say, okay, that's fine. You know, they they're very good in this area, but you know, I'm still gonna show just, up. I'm still gonna compete. I just try and compare myself to what I previously brought to stage, and um, try am focus. I improving yes. since since try you know the last time? That and obviously my coach plays a huge part in that. Um, constantly checking up, seeing how I'm doing um, on a personal level as well, like how's things at home, like that type of thing. If you could start, you know, your fitness journey all mm -hmm. over again and, you know, speaking to the audience in the context of, you know, we're very inspired of what you've achieved in your life and, and how you were able to maintain it, you know, pre-post competition, what would you take with you at the beginning of your journey that you didn't have, but potentially, you know, some diet tips or a mindset that would serve you at day one, that will serve the people that are going to watch this interview? Mm, well, for me, it was the mental side of it that I battled with. Um, so if I could go back, I would just start say so don't be so hard on yourself and um just like ask yourself why are you doing it what is the reason if you're doing it for any other reason like you need to reassess why you're doing it um and try and find more of a balance because i feel that i did become a little bit obsessive with it and i blocked out a lot of friends and family in the process of trying to get to where I got. Um, yeah. Um, and obviously what I know now about training and dieting is so different from back then. My statement that I always give, it takes a village to raise a man or a woman. It takes a big village to raise a um, you know, beautiful human like you. If you could... I know there's more than three, but maybe name three people that were influential in your career and, you know, you coming up and growing up. Who would those people be? And when in your life that they, I always say a person touches you and course corrects you and guides you along your river of life. Who would those three people be? Mm, in terms of my fitness journey, there are various fitness models that are, idolized and looked up to um there's oh I forget their surnames uh Ashley Coltswalter or something she was an Olympia champ blonde um, lady no she's got black hair, black hair. um okay. Yerishna who is now a wellness pro um and then obviously my coach because like I wouldn't I've been anywhere without him. Um, and then, like, obviously, like, friends and family that have, like, guided me along the way. I can't mention anyone in particular because it was a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. I um, can't think of anyone else. Okay, no problem. <laughs> no problem. Um, I want to process failures and landmines but i want to package them together so how i want to pose the question is a landmine is a potentially a mistake that you've made mm -hmm. um you know in in your training or in your diet or you know outside of you know the mental game um, but one that you say okay i stepped on this landmine it hurt me a little bit you know there was an explosion mm -hmm. but i've learned from it mm -hmm. so we want to plot those um, on a GPS coordinate so that we can learn from your mistakes rather than stepping on the landmine ourselves? I think one of mine I can definitely say is um, my move from IFBB to WPFF. So I was very, I cannot say, 
from winning all of my shows and winning Natal Champs and coming off one like great um like a winning streak to going to essays and placing six in my lineup that knocked me a lot um because the how can I say the um, what do you call it the criteria changed and instead of listening to what the judges were looking for I just continued to train how I was and I outgrew the the criteria for that division and I was too big for my lineup so they kind of made an example out of me and placed me last because I didn't listen um so that that's I took a knock on that so obviously pro- process process a loss you know in Roxy's mind you know, me, me and a colleague, she's actually off, off camera now processing losses yesterday together. And different people, um, uh, you know, process a loss yeah. differently. How do you process? I went, you know, I'm coming off this I winning, just, winning, winning, winning. I felt what? like I, I let everyone down. You felt like you let everybody down. Yes. Um, just, um, I'm very hard on myself. And like when I don't do well in something, it'll like play on my mind. Like what what I could have done to have like bettered that. And um, some things I need to realize are out of my control. And yes. um, it's in the hands of a couple of judges on the day. And um, I've just got to accept it for what it is. And what I took from that is actually better than what I thought because I ended up becoming a WBFF pro after leaving IFBB. And uh, if I look back now, I should have joined the federation a long time ago. Okay, earlier. Earlier, yeah. Okay. Because it's more suited for me. And I mean, I love IFBB and it took me to Poland and like there's so many good things that came out of it. But if I look back now, it's not wasn't as suited for me as WBFF and um, yeah. Best advice that you've ever received that really sometimes for me I've I've received many and sometimes in business it hit literally like a train, boom, mm. and explodes. You know, sometimes it lands like snow and like that makes sense. Perhaps you can share with us. Uh, I would say, like, if something doesn't work out, it's just not the plan for you, and you will find that there's something better in store for okay. you. Okay. First car. What was first your first car? car? What is Roxy's first car? I was so car? proud of my car. I had a little Kia Picanto. Okay, nice. <laughs> I was really proud of it because I what bought color? it myself, a black one. Okay. And it was a Kia Picanto Striker. Okay. And at the time, I played soccer, and I was a striker. So I was like, "This is my this car. is my jam. This is me." <laughs> I know it's a little cheapy, but I was so proud that I bought it myself, and it wasn't like my parents' help or anything. No handouts. Yeah, and then I bought a R twenty. I learned the R twenty. Okay, a little bit bigger. A little bigger, and I drive a. Cross. Nice, that's a beautiful car. Yeah, because I'm always up and down to Joburg for my work and stuff, for my other business, raid my closet. So I'm always carting my stuff up and down. Up and down, you yeah. need a little bit of a bigger boot. <laughs> and um, if, you know, price, nothing was a, a, a object, what is your dream car? Mm, I'm really loving the Defender. Oh, the new the one Ma- is beautiful. The Bond edition. Yes. Oh. Either that or a G wagon. A G wagon. Yeah, I like your style, my friend. I hope you or buy one Urus. in each color. A Lamborghini Urus. A yellow one. No, black is best. Okay. Cool. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Good. Well, so I hope you buy one all of three. Is good. <laughs> one one morning we're gonna receive an Instagram story. What's <laughs> up, guys? Check my new car. Check yes, all my new rides here. Course. Here's my Urus. Have to Here's... manifest that. Of course, <laughs> I believe in it. <laughs> Definitely. Tell us about your other businesses mm-hmm. and, you know, we want to give you a shout out and what's next, you know, what are you excited about? We can put up the links okay. below. Okay, well, 
Funny enough, both of my businesses come from my fitness background. So firstly, my makeup. Um, I, I had to do my own makeup when I competed at Worlds in Poland. Okay. So I had to do my own stage makeup. And after that, like I realized, okay, like I really love this. And from there, I uh, studied I went after work, like evening classes, while I was prepping for a show. And I put myself through the makeup course. And then I was booking off work to like do makeup. And um, yeah, that's like seven, eight years ago now that I got into makeup. And I do all the fitness shows. I do bridal. I do shoots, whatever you need makeup for. And obviously the makeup lessons. We, we've got our ladies of Midback. <laughs> I think it's your yes. biggest class yet, 20 plus people. Yeah, so I'm excited really for them. taken off. Um, as I said to you earlier, it is like one of my biggest classes. I uh, did one at BMW for Women's Day with 50 ladies. Nice. But yeah, I love it. And then my other business is Raid My Closet. So I started that just before COVID. Okay. So what Raid My Closet is, it's a st- it's a photo shoot styling service. So say you, you want to do a photo shoot for ladies only. You want to do a shoot. You don't know where you're going to get your clothes from. You don't have any ideas. That's where I come into play. So I've got a whole wardrobe. So ladies will message me and say, oh, I like this outfit. Then I'll send them like courier the outfits or okay. or um I do the shoots for them, like I create content like just with my iPhone. Like um take photos on my iPhone of them and edit it and everything, do their makeup, style them in the outfits, or I work with a photographer and he takes the photos. So you can get like the whole package, you just rock up at the shoot, have your makeup done. Address you, help you with your posing, and yeah, amazing. And so, and and I mean, we we flew you out here, so you 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 know we can. How do you like the bookings to be done? Is it a website where where? So mainly, I've just got um, bookings off my Instagram page. Off so Insta, people just okay. DM me and they say, oh, "I've got a shoot. Can I please have these three items?" And then I courier to them. They send it back. Or um, my Durban shoots, I've been collabing with a photographer there who's really amazing. It's um, Pagel. So you just rock up at the studio. I do your makeup. I put your outfits on for you. Help with photos. Like it's a hair out of place or like anything. Like I just help on set and then he does the photos and yeah. And does the, the, so, the whole edit and send, yeah. sends out the images and there we go. Yeah. So... Luckily, everything like jolts together, the makeup, the fitness, the fashion, because not everyone knows like what to do these of course. days. Like, and being like an influencer myself, like, you know what I works know and what, what works. people, people yeah. like, yes. And what, what's current. Yeah, yeah. And it's also nice to have that woman's touch. Like sometimes the photographers, they don't necessarily know like what to do or sometimes the ladies feel uncomfortable so I'm there just to help 100% make, it, wish, make it easy I had had that when I was first starting off because like no one knows like when you're just starting off like, so there is a need yeah so, amazing yeah. Roxy may I call you my friend yes my friend <laughs> you have uh, you've been absolutely amazing Thank you, you. sorry I've been so nervous tell me it's it's awesome I'm, I'm sorry these are like technical questions because I, I I I think I'm maybe, probably gonna watch this back and be like oh why did I say that no you were great you really were you're gonna give so much value to uh to our viewers I, I mean hundreds of thousands of people look up to I you I think the main thing people need to realize is it takes consistency like you can't just overnight I think you're just gonna like be winning shows and like also something that's a pet peeve for me is when you win a show and then you just like get this ego about you like it takes time like people that have been in the game for a long time like you've done so much to get to that you don't just now win one show and think you're better than somebody else because there's always going to be someone better than you you have so, to constantly level up. Yeah. I've seen it in, in business, in, in our environment. 
you know, we do sales and it's, mm. it's hardcore. Mm. The moment, not, not all, but some. The way I judge a person's longevity in, in, in our company is the moment a salesperson or manager, somebody makes a, a bunch of money, like a lot of money, 10, mm. 12, 13 X their income. I'm just watching for the ego. Yeah. If the ego can't handle you, it, I know. You need poof, to it just plummets. remain humble because yes. like someone else is going to humble you otherwise. Yes. Yes. And it's the same with fitness. Like you need to just remain grounded and and yeah. constantly mm, constantly be consistent. Um and make it more of a lifestyle than just that single like, event. Yes. Like I train like twice a day, almost every day. How long? So in the mornings I do cardio like twenty, thirty minutes. What time do you what time do you do that? Hey, I'm going to give out information. Come it's going to be stalkers there waiting. <laughs> no. So is it like very, very early or mid-morning? No, like um, 8 o'clock because I work for myself. My okay. hours are flexible. Flexible, yeah. But obviously when I'm working, then work is a priority. Yes. And training comes after. So about 8 o'clock or so, I do cardio. I just do low-intensity training because for me, like – I lose weight quickly if like, I do too much cardio. Like okay. during lockdown when I was doing those home workouts and mainly like hit, I got too skinny and I don't... Not for me, no. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't like that skinny look. So I just do low intensity cardio, maybe some abs and carbs. And then in the evening I train weights, a different um, muscle group every day. And five, five days a week, six, seven? Uh, six. Six days a week. Uh, three leg days. Oh, like January long is. because you just walk in there and it's like it's thousands of people. Yeah, so lately I've just been finding a square and just training everything in that square. Got you, yeah. got you. So, so in the morning, um, cardio, low intensity, yeah. and then weights, mm -hmm. weights in there six days yeah. a week. And then my meals, uh, off season, I just try to keep my protein high, and if I feel that um spilling over a bit and I don't feel my best then I just carb cycle a bit so I'll have minimal carbs um, or cut carbs for three days and then have carbs on the one day um, but that's only if I'm like prepping for a photo shoot or if I'm feeling yuck or something yeah. my friend you are definitely going to leave us better than you found us thank you so much for the information <laughs> thank you for having me and thank you for bringing me all the way here it's a huge pleasure I feel so, like a celeb. You <laughs> are just, a celeb. I'm just a normal person. <laughs> Thank you very much. But you've done yeah. amazing stuff in your life. And you know we can all learn from you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for, for coming. Pleasure.